on a scale of zero to 10, how stressful is it to be a pre-medical student? Today, we're going to talk about ways to stay healthy mentally and physically as a pre-medical student. I'm going to give you five key things. What's up, fam? It's Dr. Dale here. Welcome to Pre-Med Mondays. All right, let's dive right into these five things today, right? Make sure you got a copy of your book. Take notes in your book, right, today. So I've got my Apple Pencil here, so I'm going to be writing notes, and I'll put it up on the screen so you guys can stay up, um, keep track with what I'm going through, okay? So yeah, being a pre-med is, is challenging, right? It's challenging, and and as a pre-medical student, you're required to do so many things if you want to make it, at least, right? If you want to make it, you got to do so many things. It can take a toll on you both mentally and physically, mentally and physically. And here's what you got to pay attention to. If you're not ahead of the game, if you're not paying attention to if you're not thinking about that, that can be the thing that keeps you from getting to where you're trying to get to. That can be the thing that keeps you out of medical school, right? It's so easy to say, oh, I'm okay. I'm okay. Let me just grind, 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 grind. And I'll be all right. And then you hit that wall. And when you hit that burnout, which burnout is a real thing, when you hit that burnout, it's challenging to bounce back sometimes. Challenging to bounce back sometimes. So let's stay ahead of the game. Let's talk about how to how to keep it from even happening, right? Keep it from even happening, right? So five ways to stay healthy, both mentally and physically as a pre-medical student. So number one is, number one, have a study plan. Have a study plan. I know you're thinking, hey, Dr. Dale, duh, of course I'm going to have a study plan. But you'd be surprised. I dare say most pre-meds don't have a real study plan, right? Here's the thing about having a study plan, right? For, so to get into med school, we all know how important grades are, right? So grades are important to get into med school. So grades are important. And because of that, what does that mean? That means you spend a lot of time studying. And if you're spending a lot of time studying without a good plan in place, you can really burn yourself out for one or two reasons. Number one is you can just study too much. So too much studying. And number two, inefficient. And this is the key right here, inefficient. So sometimes people just study, 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 study. I'm really big on this idea of task management, not time management. So what you see happen sometimes is a lot of pre-meds, you guys will just study based on time. And it's just inefficient studying when you realize, hey, I probably could have got that done in 10 minutes rather than the full hour. So having a study plan helps circumvent all that, right? It takes the stress off because so much of your pre-med journey is about studying and getting grades. That's what leads to a great deal of the stress. That's what leads to a great deal of the mental stress. You get a bad grade, you're feeling depressed about it, right? You're studying so much, you can't go to the gym and exercise. So much of your pre-med journey is about studying that you need to have a plan. And you know what they say, those who fail to plan, plan to fail plan to fail. Don't be in that category. Don't be in that category. You need to plan, have a plan. They say plan the process and work the plan, right? Or work, plan the work, then work the plan. Plan the work, then work the plan, right? And trust the process. Trust the process. Right, so that's the first thing. Have a study plan. Number two, huge. Pre-meds, I'm willing to bet a lot of you guys aren't doing it. Let me know. You guys in the comments down below, tell me what you tell me how you feel as though your your diet is. Good diet, bad diet. So you need to eat a healthy diet. You know, the freshman 15, they talk about the freshman 15. What's the freshman 15? The freshman 15 is when you get to college, you get in those cafeterias. I'm put pounds after that, right? You get you get to college, you get in the cafeteria, you got all the food in the world that you want, right? It's all there at your disposal, right? Your friends are going out to restaurants all the time. You guys are ordering food to, to your dorms, to your apartments all the time. You gain weight. Why do you gain weight? Because you can eat whatever you want and you've got to have the discipline to say no sometimes, right? But the real issue is a lot of a lot of college students, a lot of pre-meds, you're filling up with carbs, right? Simple carbs, right? You have carbs, carb diet, and, and simple carbs. So these things are going to be high sugar, high sugar, high sugar, high sugar. And that's not good because what that's going to do, that's going to lead to more fatigue. At least a fatigue and weight gain. Fatigue and weight gain. With that fatigue and weight gain, that's leading to slow alimentation. That slow alimentation then impacts your studying because your studying is impacts. Then you got to study harder. And if you're inefficient, then you're going to be needing to eat food quicker, more junk food. It becomes this vicious cycle. So you need to eat a healthy diet. You want to be thinking about your, you know, your veggies and your fruits, right? You want to get these organic boosts of energy. So veggies and fruits. And I know it's, I know it's challenging. You're in college. Trust me, I was there. I remember what it was like, right? No challenging. But this one, this is when it comes to this whole idea again of 
plan. You want to plan these things. If you plan your meals, it makes it easier. When I say plan meals, I get it. You wake up, you're going to go eat whatever's in the cafeteria. I get it. But have a, have a, a semblance of a plan. Say, okay, I'm going to eat three apples today or one apple orange or have some sort of plan in place so that way you're avoiding eating all this junk food which is really going to take a have a big hit on your body right then you gain weight you might start feeling bad about yourself the all sorts of things can come with this if you don't eat a healthy diet and you know there's one thing that we don't teach pre-meds nearly enough for any college student the importance of eating you look at professional athletes look at lebron james all these professional athletes they spend so much money right so much mental energy or hiring the right people for your diet, because your diet impacts your performance, not just physically, but mentally as well. You've got to eat a healthy diet. Eat a healthy diet. All right, number three. Number three is exercise. You want to exercise. And, and you know, in the book, I write exercise at least three times, three times a week. Exercise, right? Exercise is amazing for a variety of reasons. Um, number one, obviously, it's just good for your your you know, overall health, your heart health, things of that sort, right? So number one, I was just going to say, keeps you in shape. So I'll just write shape, right? Keeps you in shape. That's number one, right? You want to stay in shape. You want to stay healthy. You want to be able to run out, run out, run out there and do intramurals, whatever, have fun, right? So let me, let me put that as number two, actually. Number two for exercise is have fun. You get to have fun. Number three, when you exercise, it's actually another energy booster, Right, you're releasing them chemicals, neurotransmitters, and it's a, it's an energy booster. It's a, it's a natural energy booster, so it's good for you. So what I tell people a lot of times is exercise before you go study. Of course, you're going to study lots of study, 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 exercise, then go study again because it can actually increase your focus. It can actually increase your focus, right? Increase your focus, and you're releasing endorphins, all sorts of stuff when you exercise, and just just gets you feeling good. And one of the biggest reasons I like exercising, especially in college, and this was huge for me socialize you get to socialize with people especially when you exercise like in the rec center wherever your your facility is right exercise in the midst of other people that's that's social time because you get a mental break you get a mental breather from it also a mental breather right uh, let's create a new page here number four so number four is going to be read something that has nothing to do with with um your studies, right? So I'm not talking about read a book on science, chemistry. You no, know, read some, read a novel, read a biography, um, read something not medical or not science, right? Read something else. So we're talking novels, bios, whatever, right? Read something that interests you. Why is this important? It's important because it gives your brain a break. You get in the mental breather, right? You get that mental breather, but also thinking about this, you say, okay, you think you're just getting the mental breather at the same time, the practice for reading is going to get you better prepared for your MCAT, right? So in a sense, you're kind of studying for the MCAT. So uh, let me get that. I wrote that in the best spot. So in a sense, I'm just going to say, you know, it's, it's MCAT prep in a sense, MCAT prep. I don't want you to read MCAT prep. I'm saying when you're reading something for leisure, that's also preparing for the MCAT just because you're reading. You're working on getting through passages fast. MCAT is going to be a lot of reading. This just helps you with that. But don't even think about it like that. Just think about it as, as hey, I'm going to read, take my mind off of all this school stuff so I can just relax and have some time to myself. Right? But then you're tricking yourself a little bit because you're also studying for the MCAT just by practicing reading. That's I'll tell you one thing. With me, I was never, I was never a super fast reader. Um, I struggled to finish the MCAT, so I didn't get the best score in the MCAT. That's primarily because I can I don't read fast enough to kind of get through that those passages that quick. So I struggled to get through the MCAT. Had I been a better reader, I'm sure I would have got a much better score than I actually did. So that's something you want to start thinking about early. So if you're practicing reading just leisurely, whatever you enjoy reading, maybe newspapers, whatever you enjoy reading, just practice some reading. That's going to help you with your MCAT. And the earlier you start doing that, the better you'll be able to do in that MCAT and not an MCAT all test from here on out. And number five, you're going to be like, Dr. Dale, are you sure about this number five? Are you, are you sure about number five, Dr. Dale? Can we really do this one? Party. Yes, you can. You can party. Now, a couple of caveats. Let me say this first. When I went to college, I did not go to a party my entire, like, my, like really go to a party my first semester in college. I think like before the school year started, like, I went to something with some, with some buddies that I made. But, like, once the school year started, I did not go to a party. Until the first semester, I'd taken my last exam and I was good. So I was focused. Number so before party, let me just, I'm just gonna say lock in mentally, right? So first of all, that's the first thing y'all do. Lock in mentally. And when I say that, I'm talking about your studies. 
grades first. So grades first. And y'all don't laugh at my handwriting. I'm a doctor, okay? So grades first, all right? But then after that, it's okay to party. Once your grades are done, you know, settled, you're getting good grades, it's okay to party. But keep in mind a few things. You don't want to be out there getting in trouble. So this is what I say. I say stay sober, stay modest, and stay O-O-T, out of trouble. Stay out of trouble because these are the things I've seen ruin people's, not just pre-med careers, but ruin people's college careers, right? Not staying sober. People getting out there, getting hammered, getting drunk. Next thing you know, you're doing something crazy, crazy stupid, and they get in trouble, right? Either that or people doing things that's not very modest, and it puts them in a whole different predicament of life. Whole different predicament of life, right? Stay sober. Stay modest. Stay out of trouble. But it is okay to party and have fun in your college process. It's college. You're young. That's fine. Enjoy it. Okay. Nothing wrong with that. All right. Let's recap these five things again. Number one. So five ways to stay healthy, both mentally and physically as a pre-medical student. Number one, have a study plan. A lot of your pre-med journey is about getting the grades, right? So you want to plan your studying ahead of time, stick to it so it doesn't stress you out. Number two, eat a healthy diet, right? People go to college, get a lot of weight. That weight can lead to fatigue, can lead to... um uh, mental, just feeling bad about yourself, right? Uh, it, it can lead to a lot of stuff, slow meditation, all sorts of stuff. So eat a healthy diet. Avoid the carbs, natural, natural, organic stuff, right? Fruits, veggies, get that energy boost that way. Number three, exercise. Exercise, exercise. Gives you more energy. Get to go to the gym, socialize with other people. Number four, read something that has nothing to do with the sciences or your pre-med journey. At the same time, while you're reading for leisure, you're going to be practicing reading and getting ready for the MCAT. And number five, party. It's okay to party. Just stay sober, stay modest, stay out of trouble. All right. Those are five ways to stay mentally and physically healthy as a pre-medical student. All right, guys. So I hope you got it. Hope you're hope you're you're seeing what I'm trying to do for you guys here. Take you on this journey over 52 weeks. Um, just based on this book, Pre-Med Mondays, right? I'll put the link down below somewhere so you can grab a copy if you want. All right. Hey, if you're getting value from this, do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button. A lot of people, a lot of people watch the videos on my channel, but people aren't subscribing. Right. So people are watching the videos. They'll come back. They'll watch it again next week, but they're not subscribing. I'll tell you what, it does me a huge favor if you hit that subscribe button because YouTube sees that and the algorithm will adjust in my favor, which my favor hopefully is your favor because then I can get more videos out, things of that sort for you. Right. So hit that subscribe button if you don't mind doing it. And now here's what's going to happen. YouTube knows what you like. So YouTube's going to put a couple of videos around here somewhere. It thinks you're going to like the video. So go ahead and click on the video. Keep on learning. Keep on growing. I'm here to help you guys be great. You have permission to be great. Praying for you guys and I love you.